Hello, sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And as promised, I am here with the results of my baseball previewing simulation to show what, um, to predict what each team's record would be if there was a 148 game season, which at this point looks kind of optimistic at best. But um, we will still go with that, see what, um, what would have happened, or at least what the prediction model says would have happened with a 148 game season based on the Stratomatic game engine as the predictor. So uh, here on the screen, here's my first sheet that I've got up, and uh, that just lays out a couple of things that I want to say before we get in, before we delve into some of the statistics. Um, uh, first of all, you can see at the top, the sims are complete. I've done 20 simulations, and uh, 20 simulations of a 148 game season, and the standings reflect the... Um, average season that each team had so um that will be so like if you see that a team was 77 and whatever you know 71 or whatever it would have been yeah 77 71 that means that on average that's what the team did over the 20 simulations and that's the record that was assigned to them based on that average um and there is no playoffs or World Series, as I mentioned before. I'm not going to do a playoffs or a World Series because all of those involve short series, and really anything can happen in a short series. In fact, I did 148 games 20 times, but if you were to do this 20 more times or 40 more times, you might get slightly different records for at least some of the teams because the more you do it the more um accurately reflective of what would have happened it you know the statistics become i only did 20 because that was time consuming enough so let's with that all of that uh, out of the way let's get into some of the, the standings based on the records So here, and I black this out, I'll unwhite, you know, I'll um, uh, unblack this in a minute. Um, but, um, and in fact, I don't think I blacked it out down for the National League, so you're going to see that. But anyway, here is the American League East. Here was the um, statistics for the National League East, the overall records. New York overall, on average, was 89 and 59, and would have been the would be the American League champions. Tampa Bay was 81 and 67 and finished an average of eight games behind them. Boston was 78 and 70. Baltimore was 61 and 87 surprisingly and finished one game ahead of Toronto. I think of the two I think of the results that I got, these are probably the least realistic right here. It's probably more realistic to think that Baltimore would be the last place team in the, a in the American League East, but that's not what the model said. So now we move down to the Central. Well, let's move up here a little bit. The Central, uh, Minnesota wins the division. They're 92 and 56 on average. And as you'll see in a minute, I have some compiled oddities or um, you know takeaways from doing the 20 sims and one of the takeaways was that Minnesota never finished second they did I think a couple of times um, tie for first with the White Sox but they never finished in second so they on average were 92 and 56 Cleveland was 80 and 68 on average and then Chicago finished just barely in third place behind Cleveland, 79 and 69 on average. Kansas City at 59 and 89, and then Detroit at 49 and 99. And that is a heck of a bad record. 
So now you got the American League West. Houston wins the West 97 and 51. Again, like Minnesota, Houston never failed to finish first in the West. Uh, Oakland at 82 and 66, 15 whopping games behind them. The LA Angels at 72 and 76. Texas at 66 and 82. Seattle at 59 and 89. I think as far as where these teams finished, it's probably very accurately reflective of what would happen. Um, I'm not so sure the LA Angels would be under 500. They seem a little bit better than an under 500 team, but maybe. So now, yeah, here we go. I forgot to black out the uh, playoff team. So here's the playoff teams for the National League. That would be Washington, St. Louis, LA, Chicago, and Milwaukee based on this model. Uh, the uh, Washington Nationals win the uh, National League East with an 85 and 63 record on average. Atlanta finishes seven games behind them on average. New York, the, uh, the Mets at 74 and 74. And a big part of the Mets being just 500 was the late loss of DeGrom, who they would not have and who was not in the sim because they wouldn't have him for this season. Then you got the Philadelphia Phillies at 71 and 77. And then Miami off doing their own thing at 57 and 91. So now you got the Central Division, St. Louis 84 and 64. Again, we'll get into the particulars of how much uh, St. Louis actually won the division versus Chicago or Milwaukee or whatever. But on average, St. Louis wins the division with Chicago only two games worse than them, and then the Brewers four games worse than them. And then Cincinnati at 77 and 71, fourth in the division, and then Pittsburgh, again, kind of like Miami, doing their own thing, 55 and 93. Pittsburgh, another one of those oddities or things that you would notice. Pittsburgh always finished last in the Central. But that really shouldn't be a shot. To you. And now you got the West. Uh, the LA Dodgers, again, the Dodgers never failed to finish first in the NL West. 95 and 63 on average. The Arizona Diamondbacks, 78 and 70, 17 games behind them. The second place team, 17 games behind them. San Diego, 71 and 77. Colorado, 69 and 79. San Francisco, 62 and 86. And again, I don't think there's any real shocking revelations in here, anything that you would think is out of the norm as far as where the teams finished, with the exception of the AL East, and we will go back up there and we'll just uh, reveal who the playoff teams were, but um, let's see here, well there you go. And we just take a quick look. <laughs> uh, the Yankees, Minnesota, Houston, those were the division winners, and then Oakland and Tampa Bay. So those were the playoff teams for the uh, for the American League, which you probably could have figured out as you were watching, as we were going along. So there's the National League now. Here are the interesting facts. The Yankees only failed to finish first in the AL East twice. Minnesota always finished first. No, once, yeah, once tied with Chicago. The White Sox made the playoffs eight times. I'm calling out the White Sox specifically because I'm a White Sox fan, and I want to, you know, point that out to the White Sox fans out there. But eight times in 20, the White Sox actually were a playoff team based on where they finished and what their record was. Houston always finished first. St. Louis finished first 40% of the time and second 50% of the time. And then, uh, strangely, the other 10% uh, of the time they finished fourth. 
And Pittsburgh always finished last, and the Dodgers always finished first. So that's what we got there. So again, no real big revelations there. Nothing really earth-shattering. Pretty much you could guess that that's possibly how everything would finish. I mean, if you're a White Sox fan, you would hope that the White Sox could slip in front of Cleveland. But really, as you can see, they are so close, over 20 simulations, that it could be either one of them. So now we got White Sox stats. I didn't put everybody's stats out because getting everybody's stats for the White Sox through 20 simulations would have been, again, prohibitively time consuming. But here are some noticeable statistics. Um, Lewis Robert hit 263. Um, on, and these are the averages. These are the average season that these guys put up over 20 seasons. So Lewis Roberts' average season was 265 with uh, with 32 homers and 79 RBIs and 35 stolen bases, which is nice. Grandall hits 241 with 28 home runs. Encarnacion, on average, hit 230 with 35 home runs, and he had a 50 home run season. Madrigal hit 235 and only 56 at bats for uh, the season, um, and especially in a 48 game season, that just might happen because uh, um, Mendick is supposed to start the season as their second baseman. You got uh, Johan Moncada, spelled his first name wrong there, but you got Johan Moncada at 305 with 29 home runs. Uh, Mendick at 287 with 12 home runs. Abreu hitting 263 with 148 hits and 200 er, and 562 at bats with 31 home runs. And then down here you got the pitching. Giolito on average was 14 and 9 during the season with a 414 earned run average. Gio Gonzalez 7 and 6 on average with a 445 earned run average. Uh, Dallas Keuchel 13 and 10 with a 446 earned run average. Dylan Cease, 5 and 8 with a 588 earned run average. Kopech, 6 and 2 with a 271. Evan Marshall, 2 and 2 with a 421. And then Cishek, a little surprising here. Cishek was kind of worse than I would have expected. He was 4 and 5. His average season was 4 and 5 with 12 homers allowed and 70 innings pitched and a 4-12 earned run average. So there you go, that's the, uh, the average White Sox season. So that's what I got for you. If you guys want to take a better look at stuff, you know, just uh, whatever, rewind the video, go back, look at the parts that you want to see. But again, I think as far as the standings go, where teams finished, there weren't any real surprises at all. Um, and even really in some of these White Sox statistics you can see here, I don't think there's anything that shocks anybody. Um, except maybe C-Sheck being as bad as that, but who knows? I mean, the guy is getting on in years too. So, um, that's what I got for you. Now, I am thinking about um, possibly taking this exact season the way where all the players are where the um, you know the 148 game schedule and all of that and starting a season where I take the White Sox I manage the White Sox and we go game by game and I either like with out of the park um, like I'm doing with the out of the park um, nights I either play the season and then just televise certain games here and there throughout the season and update you uh, I'm doing the same thing with the with the uh, Minnesota North Stars 1990-91 team or the alternative would be that every time I do a game I put it up on the website or up on the uh, YouTube you know up on my channel but that's an awful lot of checking in and seeing what's going on uh, I suppose I mean the games can be played in like 20 minutes so I suppose I could do like two games at a time in a video. Um, 
but you know we'll see I, 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 I might do something along those lines at least until real baseball comes in because I think that that's something fans are really clamoring for people want to see some type of baseball they want to see baseball 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 something and like I've mentioned before um, you've got MLB 20 the show putting up games and showing and really the way the animation in those games it's almost like really watching a baseball game so those are kind of cool I watch those from time to time so I may actually um, decide to go ahead and do that and start a White Sox season and televise either various or every one of the games. But that's all I got for right now. Remember to subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Leave a like, leave a comment below, tell me how you would rather see the White Sox season play out if I do it, which way you prefer. For right now, it's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.